Everybody thinks artists are lazy because they're not posting enough content. Labels, managers, marketers are like post, post, post. And if you're not posting, you're lazy. But that's just not the truth in most cases. Before I get into the tips of this video, I just want to give you the background of where I'm coming from. I've helped multiple artists get millions of streams for from organic content. I've had boot camps with artists where we work with them for six to 12 months, helping them grow on platforms like TikTok that was all around content, um, like having actual camps where we bring out artists in person and we record the content from it. So I have a lot of different touch points outside of having a marketing agency where we've helped artists grow through content, right? And through all these conversations and working with artists and really getting up and close and personal, a lot of this assumption that artists are lazy comes from not being able to recognize the real problem because managers, labels, and most marketers don't have to create content themselves. So managers, labels, marketers, send this to your other homies because maybe it'll help you be able to communicate better with your artists and then artists send this to your friends. All right, now with that being said, there's a few, three primary benefits that come from actually creating content, high volume con content programs, especially. And I'm going to talk about it in this context, You'll see, um, just so you can understand exactly why artists aren't as lazy as you think. So starting off, anxiety. It reduces anxiety when you commit to a high volume strategy when you're posting, posting, posting. Why does it do that? Because it helps you escape the insecurity of, is this going to work? Like, I need to add two, three other aspects to this video. You're overthinking. And one of the biggest pains that an artist can go through is going through your creative process. And then it's cool because you have this creative burst. But when you get to that last 10% in trying to improve, that's when frustration comes. And if you're sitting on that forever, that piece of content, next thing you know, you fail. Like you, you're, you're slumped, you're defeated, you're starting to be stressed out and the anxiety increases because you're wondering, is this going to be impactful, right? Is this good enough? So it forces you to go ahead and put out content to stay to your schedule, which prevents you being able to have too much time to think. That's one of the biggest barriers to being the artist, right? And on top of that, there's a lot of insecurity when I talk about being good enough or not. And when you only have a little bit of content, it forces you to increase the stakes. It's like, this really matters. If I'm only going to drop one project this year like, or one song this year or one social media post this year, the stakes are so high because your expectations increase, right? I'm not going to be able to do this for an, you know, another period of time. But if I'm doing once a month, right, once a week, right, daily, like the more you put things out, the lower the stakes that you um, provide for something. The lower the stakes that you put on something, which means you don't get as anxious about it because you're not building up this story in your head. The anxiety is a huge part of why artists are not putting out as much content as people think. And managers, labels, whoever, right? They can't see beyond the mask because it takes working with a lot of them to really understand that a lot of this pushback isn't Right, the fact that they are lazy or they don't believe in content, all the things that you will hear, it's because they're a little nervous. Not only are they nervous that people might not like it or it might not be good enough, they're nervous that it's going to have a bigger impact on the brand that they want to be able to build for themselves, the vision that they saw for themselves. Right, And they don't want to get caught in this world of becoming a content creator versus an artist. But understanding how to lower those stakes and helping artists understand that it doesn't have to be that way for instance, you could do a um, a song a week for one month. You could do a song a week for six months. You can do daily content posts for three months and then plan to stop after that just to get yourself to the next period, right? The next plateau, take a break, step back, see everything that's going on. So there's a lot of ways to navigate this. And the more that you understand that there's more to this beyond just I don't like to post content, P content isn't good, then you'll start to be able to problem solve around it and help an artist or help yourself if you are the artist, work around it. Like for me personally, before I get to number two, because number two is going to be really big as well. For me personally, when I started creating content, which is kind of why I started to be able to see that side of things, I had to give myself that daily regimen, not with any goals 
of um, followers or anything. It was a weekly regiment, my bad. Because I knew if I was thinking too much, it was going to take too long to drop the content. And I was overthinking all the things I said, right? So I created this and made the goal a lot more around the actual post schedule versus just creating the best piece of content of every single time I drop content. However, here's the trick. If you're somebody who really cares, you're not going to drop trash. So then you just start getting better and better at posting better content in shorter periods of time, right? So it's only a problem if you don't care. But if you care, you know you, artists, don't blame somebody else. It doesn't have to be low quality. It's only low quality if you make it low quality, but you can post really high quality, artsy content. You can be an artsy artist and still care about content. I know many of them. Now, let's get to number two. The biggest thing, and it's like the antithesis of that insecurity and anxiety that gets reduced, as that gets reduced, your confidence increases. And boy, there's something about committing to something for yourself and sticking to that commitment that increases your level of confidence in yourself. You have more self-reliability and you just know if I commit myself to it, I'm going to make it happen. There's something beautiful about that. And the best part about this is this mentality transfers into other parts of your career. Here's an example. There's a rapper by the name of 2 Chains. 2 Chains was going on tour and in his tour, I think he fell off stage or something and like broke his knee or his leg or something like that, right? And instead of stopping the tour, what he ended up doing was getting a wheelchair, lacing the wheelchair wheels with pink and gold because pink was the color of what his marketing campaign was. He was doing his whole pink trap house theme. And then he had gold wheels. And not only did he do that performing on stage with this pink and gold wheelchair, he had a nurse who was dressed up, looking on theme, who was dope. She was had to be some kind of dancer and pushed him around as he performed. And it felt like a part of the show. But if he didn't commit, right, he wouldn't be forced to find a way. And when you stop, right, doing things, a lot of times you're stopping yourself from being as creative as you can be. But when you commit and say, I have to, it creates this beautiful cycle because once you commit, now he says, I have to. And now instead of stopping, he created this idea. And now that he did this idea and said, yo, look at this. I have a story to tell, not just to the world from a marketing standpoint, which was dope. Also, I have a story I can tell myself, which continues to increase my confidence. And all of our confidence is really based off of the stories we tell ourselves, but not just some type of like high level fluffy mantras. It has to be founded in consistent action. And when you do that, now you trust yourself, right? There's trust and then there's faith. Faith, right, is that confidence without any reason to trust. Trust is I've seen myself do this over and over again, and I know I'm going to come up with a solution. So it does, all of this is about being creative. For example, one time I actually got some knee surgery and I was supposed to be running some ad campaigns. I was on you know prescriptions like woozy and everything, but I still created an ad with my cast in the ad, right? Just for, and I was on the bed, and it was it wasn't even the best ad in the world. But that little drop, right, of confidence that I got from continuing to think of a solution, and I did get sales off of it, by the way, right? I did get sales, but that little drop you cannot underestimate the drop of of confidence of taking. A single action. As a matter of fact, this video right here is a perfect example. Me being aware of this, I didn't plan this, but I have a fever. I have a legitimate fever. This video it went it was supposed to be like a one take talk all the way through, but I've stopped a couple times because I got hit with the cough attack. <coughs> <coughs> like it was, it's bad. Again, this is the first Saturday of 2024. And my goal was to create a Saturday video every week in 2024, going back to a series that I did years ago. I just wanted to start it back, which brings me to before I get to the last thing that's extremely beneficial for artists and artists. You should keep this in mind. Send to your your homies, uh, managers, send to your manager friends and also talk to your artists with these things in mind. 
please subscribe because that'll let me know that you like this type of video. If you wanna to continue to see me create these videos where I can touch on things from a different angle than I can in a regular YouTube video or the pod videos, it's just more personal and touching on more of the mindset psychology from the standpoint of the artist, manager, label, marketer, you subscribing would really help and let me know it's worth doing. So appreciate that. All right, but like I was saying, I could have technically just waited to the second Saturday of the year, completely fine, right? Well, I wouldn't have been that hard on myself, to be real. I would have just started and kept going and said, now is go time. However, right, pushing myself just a little bit, right, to go ahead and knock it out, I knew the gains, that little drop of confidence would be that much better. So although the pain wouldn't be too great, missing out on that level of gain that can contribute towards momentum, I didn't want to do that. And the last benefit that nobody talks about when it comes to creating high volume content is you quickly gain a new skill set. But let me be clear what I mean by this, because I think it's undervalued when it should be overvalued, if anything, when it comes to being an artist. When you actually create a lot of content and you make sure you get better with it over time, you don't just post just a post, you start to be able to understand what is quality content, be able to analyze why it's quality content, and then understand how to create quality content for yourself. Once you can see through the matrix like that, as an artist, you have another tool in your tool belt that your creativity can leverage. Because artists of all people are just using all the inputs to express themselves, any input they have. So you'll notice the artist who like might be a rapper or, or singer, but they started in film you'll see that they have a different eye when it comes to how they create their content in general or um, their music videos, or they tend to feel like it's less, um, less of a lift to create like a movie style music video because they know all the things to do, right? All right? So somebody who has editing skill set, somebody who has an engineering skill set, all these different skill sets not only give you ability to do it with ease, but you then are able to take that tool and when you're creating, you're naturally putting all these different things together. All right, there's, I know people who are creating music and they're seeing the video at the same time because that's how their mind works because they created videos, right? But it's not like I'm creating a video. I mean, it's not like they're creating music to fit the content box, although you know some people really do do that. But I'm talking about people who just naturally, they see all the parts because they've done all the parts. And now they become way better at expressing themselves holistically as an artist than other artists. You look at somebody like Tyler, the creator, or a Pharrell or a Kanye, who've touched so many aspects of design and creation, they have really rich brands. But a large part of it comes from really dibbling and dabbling in different things. So you have a skill set that allows your vision to be even bigger. All right. So yet again, please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And other than that, I got the chills. So once I finish this video, I'm going to edit it real quick and lay my butt down so I can get better.